It's time to down your unders. Down your unders. Review and dissection of content from some of the sharpest minds in the game. Hosted by Adam Camilleri. Art of War. Down Under. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this episode 125 of the Art of War Down Under podcast. This is the last episode of the year. Beep, this beep, wonderful, beep. Yeah, this wonderful year of 2022. Way better than the previous two years is the... You know, definitely a statement <laughs> that could be said. Uh, I'm joined by one of my favorite people, one of the best the best lads, the, the siciest, the spiciest, Peter the Falcon Colissimo. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing great. How are you? Very, very, very good. We're here to first and foremost hype up the fact that you and I will be commentating this mighty end uh, to the ITC season at the LVO this year. Me and my good man Pete will be seats ones and seats two. I don't know, we'll be, mm-hmm. be, we'll be doing a Rochambeau for who's number one, who's number two on the day. Uh, but, uh, you know, live streamed, of course, on Twitch. But, um, yeah, we're going to be doing that live stream for you guys again. It was my absolute honor and pleasure to do it earlier this year. Um, and, yeah, can't wait to do – Was it our th- it'd be our third together, right? Yes. I mean, uh, last year, you and I were in the box together. And yep. then pre-COVID, um, it was you and Paul Murphy with me handling field reporting. So, yeah, this is our third LVO it's together. Our, our third I'm – Super duper excited for this one. Um, lots of rumor going around about what the the meta is going to look like, what what FLG has posted saying they're going to take, what they're not going to take. I'm really interested to see mm-hmm. like how it's all going to pan out. Um, but yeah, like big end to the 2022 season, and we're going to be there for it. Well, it's our first. It's our first full season. It's our first season where everybody's had a fair shake. At the rankings, yeah. and I, I'm saying shake with you know air, air quote air quotes big because you know essentially the UK has had the lion's share, essentially a three day super major every other month it seems. Yep, and the America oh, they've, been, they've been destroying it, dude. It's crazy. It's we're actually got a really spicy, spicy season where there's multiple people in contention. Anyone in the top five can win, I believe, with you know some caveats of other people not having you know have to not make shadow around or not make top eight, etc. But man, it's going to be a crazy run to the end. This is our last episode for the season. We don't miss here. If, if I can, uh, you know, stick an episode together with, you know, spit, chewing gum, duct tape, hopes and dreams, I will for you guys. I love you so. And I do need to tell you something about that'll be changing for my content in uh, the year of 2023. So I have a, I am part of Art of War that will, you know, that will continue for as long as I have an incredible relationships with Nick, John, Siegler, all those awesome dudes. I love them to death. They are, you know, absolute brothers from another mothers for me. Um, and but we have a, an issue with the way things are being handled on the the being well, how our products are being handled on their side of things. And when I say our, I mean myself and the other Art of War podcast, that being the wonderful Blake Law, Unbroken, and of course Nick Nardavati, Paul Murphy, now doing Art of War Vanilla, whatever you want to call it. Um, we are splitting that off from what was the one-click bundle. We have realized that that one-click bundle that was what most people purchased. Well, you know, I have you know a couple hundred people who bought, purchased that through their website and through Art of War. Um, we realized we were devaluing the entire production, the entire everything, the war room and all the podcasts by having them all in that one click. And that should, if we were to jack that thing up to its adequate you know what it would be to be equitable and adequate for you know all parties involved it would probably people would stop buying it so the only thing we could do was to split it off into its component parts you will no longer be able to purchase the second half of my podcast through art of war uh, 40k.com you will only be able to purchase it through my personal patreon art of war down under um please go over there subscribe now um if you are already in the bundle deal and you want to keep getting my content go over and do it asap I'll be doing a bunch of stuff that I haven't done because I was part of Art of War because everyone in my um, everyone who signed up to my Patreon automatically got you know into their Discord. I have my own Discord, which I haven't put much time into because I figured everyone was already in their one, which is magnificent. I'll be updating my one to make it more you know user friendly, a bit more a bit bit in depth because you know hopefully there's going to be a little bit of an influx. So look forward to some stuff there. I'm also tossing about putting out some some content exclusively just some like little sound bites 10 minute 15 minute 20 minute recordings personally of my own journeys and travels as i uh meander through another three months of 
forty k uh, over in the you know northern continental Northern America. Um, and yeah, so please jump over to Art of War down under over on Patreon and sign up if you haven't already. Or if you are migrating over, that's where you need to be as of next year, which is next week. But Peter and I are here for the sole purpose of updating our living faction ladder for the end of the freaking year. Technically, we could do this in, what, three weeks to try and make it, you know, cherry ripe for the LVO, but the fact of the matter is that is an absolute freaking mess, and we don't know what's going to happen, right? Yeah, I mean, like, there's a a lot of rumor, a lot of, I would say at this point, if, if you know people, substantiated rumor, that in the next three weeks we're going to see a new da- uh, balance status slate, a new uh, Munitorum field manual, and we already know we're getting a new GT pack um, yeah. with a detachment that's going to completely change the game, even if there were no other changes. Um, so, yeah, like this is kind of a snapshot of a, of a, like a last moment in time for... Uh, ostensibly what ninth edition has been yeah 100 percent. It, it, it really feels like we'll be in 9.5 come you know mm-hmm. the day LV, after lvo because we know lvo is not using new missions at the very least they're not using new missions they have put out that they yeah. are willing to adopt a balanced data slate i believe but they said no to the points is that correct yeah and that's going i i think that might come to bite them in the butt well ho- hopefully we'll see if there's going to be a reevaluation once once everything well, comes out, um, it, it because how, you know, it, really, it really depends how extensive the, the points change, how are, sweeping right? things are. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really hopeful um, that you know, from what I understand of the the points coming and the data slate changes that are coming, um, like they are hand in hand. And if you allow one but not the other, it's just going to cut like be a mess. It's going to be yeah. insanity regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully we can you know, manage some of that. So yeah. I would say at this point, you do all or nothing. Uh, we'll have to see what happens, though. And also, the further ramifications, you know, LVO is not the only show in town. The week before, I'll be attending and playing in my first Super Major in quite some time at Uprising. Um, and they're, mm-hmm. they're, fully, they're fully adopting the guard book. They're already saying, like, guard is in. Um, oh, no. Yeah, they're already just like, guard, guard is being played. And- Adam. <laughs> Dude, I, I am aware. I am aware of... So the, the top four is going to be guard at Adelaide, <laughs> is what you're saying? That's well. I'd be surprised if there wasn't half the top eight. Like if it wasn't like three yeah. or four I mean, it'll out of eight. On the data slate too. I'm assuming yeah. you guys, because you're they, not crazy, are going to take everything into account. But. They want. So I know Napier, who's the TO, wants to take yeah. every new rule he can. He wants to take everything. Oh, um, do it, Adam. Uh, well, not I, you, Adam. I, other Adam. <laughs> do it. Well, I'm. I'm all. If you're going to do it, um, do all of it or none of it. Like if you're gonna, if mm-hmm. you, it, yep. because I think it's all meant to go together, and if it doesn't go together, yep. you're just gonna make it, a, a, you know, then you're the bleep, worst. Bleep this out, Seamus, an absolute fucking shitstorm for mm-hmm. everyone involved. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't fancy the first like two weeks of the the next year, rather than spending it with my my family before I jet, jettison off for three months, scrambling to try and figure out what is the broken combo I'm gonna have to go into. Um, you know, come uprising. But anyway, we're here to update our faction ladder. We can talk about this more ad nauseum. I think we've got a couple of questions to that end over in part two, which, like I said before, you should all be, you know, looking to be a part of now over on Patreon. But, my man, so every couple of months, I think the last one we did of this was 12 weeks ago, so exactly three months ago, yep. which was just before Votan dropped. We had the Votan leaks, but the, the, the book hadn't been released. So this was yep. before we knew about the nerfs as well, right? Mm-hmm. The like the um, nerfs in advance of the codex because everybody lost their minds when they saw the codex. Yeah, yeah. and we rated Votan as the only A plus. We weren't willing to say they were S tier yet because you know I think we we're a bit tentative. We wanted to see some data. I think I think you should you need to have data behind you to be in the S tier. Um, well, yeah, and I mean I think what I said was that if they release as they as they're leaked, they're busted and will be S tier. Yeah. yeah, but we did put them A plus because. The outcry was so loud. Yeah. We didn't know what was going to happen, and I mean, it just so happened that they got nerfed right out of the gate, right? Yeah. So, I mean, even even just the nerf to the the hecatons, making hecatons, you know, fifty sixty points more expensive, was enough, I think, to level them out extensively. Um, but we're going to jump in. I think and- there were two big things that made them uh, le- level them out slightly, and we'll talk about that when we get to them because there, there's a whole like they're a whole thing to well, unpack. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Um, so please, first up, Peter. Plug anything mm-hmm. and everything that you do, my man. Um, I do nothing now. I just I live a lonesome um, yeah. hobo lifestyle yeah. in yeah. the mountains of um, New Brunswick. Anybody who knows Eastern Canada knows that it's a mountainous 
um, empty region um, right on the coast. Um, and um, yeah, I'm effectively a hermit. I live here with my my three children. Um, I fight bears um, and wolves uh, and fish awesome. for lobster when I can. Yeah, um, yeah. In terms of 40K content, um, you know, I am a Goonhammer. So by all means, check out Goonhammer.com or 40kstats.goonhammer.com um, if you, for your statistical needs. Um, I also um, did take quite a hi- hiatus, but we, we made our comeback episode here this last week um, with the 40K Adjacent show. I'm going to watch uh, that with later Rob today. And Val. Yep. Um, and I'm really looking forward to keeping that up um, if I can on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. We kind of mix it up depending on children because two of the three of us have kids. Um, and, uh, you know, Rob likes to wander the, the highlands of Scotland uh, at random. So you never know when he's going to be available. Fantastic. Uh, and please, yes, yeah, support Peter and all he does. He's been a, a great friend to me in many a time after we first met each other at Charity Hammer 2020. Uh, that was when we first met each yeah. other in person. But, I mean, we'd been talking for yeah. two years prior. Yeah, Fair. Uh, so, yeah, please jump in and support. Now, every, every, we, have a, we have a living faction ladder that you and I maintain on this show every three to six months. If we can do it, we'll get in, update with what's in the, the D tier, the C tier, the B tier, the A tier, and the S tier mm-hmm. for our great game. Explain the data set that we're going to be working on for this one because, essentially, we're taking everything from the last – everything since the balanced data slate, right, the last one? Yeah, yeah. So like last time I think you and I recorded was beginning of October. Um, so it's been about three months uh, yep. since we recorded, 12 weeks or whatnot. Um, and I'm rather than using that week or two we had uh, prior to the uh, – in, like basically I'm, I'm shaving two weeks off because we got that balanced data slate mid-October. Uh, so I'm, yep. we're looking at data from mid-October until now. Um, it's still you know thousands of games and luckily – you know, every weekend now we're having 10 to 15 GTs or majors. So we're still running, you know, 150, 200 GTs or majors. We're looking at from a data perspective. Um, I'm using uh, data from ITC uh, Battles app I'm, and yep. I'm using actual factual GT games for this. Um, in terms of what we look at, um, for me, from a data analysis perspective, going back to 2018, I tend to focus on a couple of key statistics and then uh, gauge others. Uh, from time to time if I think there's a big discrepancy. So I look at um, average first round loss. I look at TWIP, tournaments and winning positions. That's yep. the amount, uh, the percentage of times that an, a faction uh, gets to their fifth game um, without a loss. Because mm-hmm. generally, if you get to that, you're in the running to win an event. Um, and then as like a secondary or tertiary statistic, I'll look at win rates I'll lo- and I'll look at... Um, uh, faction versus faction statistics, because sometimes you need to look at what a faction is losing to to fully understand like why they yeah. are in the position that they're at. So. Yep, well said, and thank you very much for explaining the uh, acronym people will be hearing on this show as well. Every single show, I mean, I, I think because we, you and I, be, we talk stats on the regular, I just forget to tell people what TWIP is. I forget to qualify mm-hmm. any of the acronyms we use. Yeah, so like Peter said, TWIP is tournament winning position. It's how often you are in pos- that faction is in position to to go undefeated and, and win win a thing. Um, yeah. Uh, or they make it to the, the pre-ultimate round. Uh, so breaking down where we sat as of last episode. So in our D tier, we have Imperial Fists and Raven Guard. C tier, Admech, Death Watch, White Scars, Ultramarines, Salamanders, Black Templars, Grey Knights, Astro Militarum. So the bulk of the, the Astartes, um, in addition to Guard and Admech, essentially. Then in B tier, we have Space Wolves, Iron Hands, Dark Angels, Orcs, Death Guard, T-Suns, Chaos Knights, Custodes, and Craftworld Elder sitting exclusively in the B plus for the Craftworld Elder. A tier, mm-hmm. we have G- Gene Steeler Cults, Drakari, Blood Angels, Chaos Demons, Imperial Knights, Chaos Space Marines, Tau, and Votan were placed in an A plus tier. That was purely speculative. Um, we might add that was just our gut feel on. We didn't want to put them in S, but we, we thought they were better than A. Um, and S tier was Sisters, Necrons, Harlequins, Votan, like we said with quotation marks, caveat here, and Tyranids. All right, my man. Let us begin. Of, of, of that sounds about right. Yeah, that that is, yep. is yep. where you're at. Let us jump straight in. And uh, before before we go any further, we are recording this on uh, Peter's Boxing Day. I'm uh, it's on my day after Boxing Day. I've spent all day moving house. This will not be an extensive episode. I do say that knowing we're probably going to go for an hour and a half. All right, D tier, mm-hmm. my man. Let's do it. Um, basically, if it's not a Blood Angel and it's in Imperial Power Armor, it's in D tier. Except sisters, or as as well as sisters. 
Oh, sorry, n- not including sisters. So, Imperial Fists, White Scars, uh, Ultramarines, Dark Angels, Salamanders, Space Wolves, Death Watch, Iron Hands, Raven Guard. Th- they're your D tier, along with Admech. And so, this is- Fists, Dark Angels, Death Watch, Raven Guard, Iron Hands, uh, we've got Space Wolves, Da-da-da-da. any others I have missed, Black Templars, and what was the last one you just said, sorry? Um, Black Templar, Raven Guard, Space Iron Hands, Wolves. Death Watch, Space Wolves, Salamanders, Dark Angels, Ultramarines, White Scars, Imperial Fists, and Admech. Beautiful, done. <laughs> so between all of these, so just for the Space Marine factions that aren't Blood Angels, um, they had three undefeateds over the last three months, but they made up like combined, they make up almost like eight or nine percent of. Like all of the factions in the game, mm-hmm. their average win rate of all of these of all of these guys, all of these power armor factions is a thirty six percent. Like and your highest is thirty eight in this time period, and it's Raven Guard was only like <laughs> five people played. Um, I'm doing what like I can. Average first, I'm doing what I can. Average first round loss for most of these factions is one point six or less, which is terrible. Like mm-hmm. generally, for average first round loss, you're looking for something close to two to be a a balanced faction. Yeah. And so once you the lower you get, the worse it gets. Uh, so yeah, power armor. I mean, we did have this beautiful Warhammer community article back in October that explained that the reason why Space Marines were bad. Um, was because um, Space Marine players were generally new, and that's and that's the only reason. Um, I mean, I we know that that's been since debunked a number of times, but it just it must be said. Um, like power armor, even with armor of contempt, it's just in a really bad spot. There are too many factions that just steamroll it, and Votan did not help because basically everything in a, in your regular Votan list mm-hmm. destroys Marines. Annihilate. So you we added another faction that just mm-hmm. wrecks them. So. Beautiful. All right. Apart from that, Admech. Tell me about how Admech's doing. They they seem to have had nothing, and they're about to get worse with the loss of the veteran cohort, right? Yeah. So Admech, they did see a little change in the balance data slate that removed a lot of uh, – well, I shouldn't say a lot, but it, it it removed what on paper seemed like a lot of the nerfs that they'd seen recently. Mm-hmm. Um, but it didn't change like a lot of the point cost changes they've had, etc. cetera. Um, the, the secondaries sorry. suck. And their secondaries are terrible. Straight suck. So they have a th- – they have a 36% win rate. Their average first round loss is 1.7. They've not seen T whip in like six months. Um, they're just like they're they're they are, you know, outside of a, of a couple of the other Space Marine like sub factions. They're they're at the bottom of the barrel and they're not really moving. So obviously the best of all the Astartes right now. Um, are what, we haven't seen Grey Knights yet, but I'm assuming Blood Angels are going to do better than Grey Knights as well. So Blood Angels is still kingpin, undeniably. Uh, of the power armor factions, yes, they did take a bit of a hit uh, from where they were, um, but they're still like if you're going to go power armor, blood angels because sanguinary guard can skew a game in your favor so easily. Yep. That's like yep. really the only way to go by the looks totally. of things right now. Makes sense. Jumping into the C tier, where are we start there? Um, Death Guard, definitely a C tier army. They've had a couple of undefeated at some smaller events. Uh, their average first round loss is uh, just shy of a 1.8. They have a 43 percent win rate. Um, so, you know, not terrible, terrible, mm. but they struggle like they they're so slow. Um, they've got like one good secondary, even that's not enough to carry them. They're just they're just in a pretty bad spot. Um, they need some they need some kind of boost, I would say. Yeah, they need they need something. I honestly just think they need to give them back some defense against mortal wounds and then they'd be fine. Uh, then their durability yep. would actually matter again. It wouldn't just be. Oh, every Especially durability. In the meta. Yeah. Every exactly right. Every durability buff that book has does not is not relevant versus mortal wounds. They don't have a single damn thing that's going to save them. Um, it's really quite terrible. All right, what's next after Death Guard? Um, pre Astro Militarum. Yeah. So. so hey, Astro Militarum made it out of the D tier. Were they? I oh, know they, they were out of D tier last time as well. They were actually the top. Yeah, of they C, were so, the top of C tier last time. And they kind of stayed there. They've now, you know, in this data, they've got a few, um, a few more undefeateds and T whips. Which, um, but when you pull the, but most of those are actually um, post codex. So the one, I shouldn't say one or two. They're like three or four different um, events that have allowed guard to participate with like full codex, mm-hmm. um, often with full balance data slate as well, which makes them worse than they exactly. already are. Yeah. Um, 
Um, like they've they've just straight up won. So like even with those included, they're only at a forty three percent win rate. Um, average first round loss of one point seven four. Um, so you know not the greatest, but they'd be lower than Death Guard if it wasn't for the fact that we you know got a handful of those of um, yes, those events it. in this data. Yeah. But um, it's not not overly much. All right. What comes next? Uh, Grey Knights. My oh, boys. So My other boys. Grey Knights. Basically, the exact same uh, stat line as yeah. Guard have, uh, minus uh, the couple wins from the from a new Codex. One point seven four average first round loss, forty three percent win rate. Uh, they do have a couple of undefeateds, um, s- some smaller events. Um, they are uh, Ennis Wilson's nightmare, from what I understand. <laughs> yeah, Man it's... has been stumped by them a couple of times. <laughs> he'll go. So. And, he'll go and beat like world class monster players on the best factions in the game. Then some. Grey Knight Savant rocks up and just checks mate checkmates him immediately. It's hilarious. Yep. Yep. I, I, mean, I do love those the... I do love those narratives, sorry. Yeah, oh, no, I was just gonna say like the key to beating him seems to just be um let him kill your stuff and then he can't <laughs> charge you and then you win. <laughs> um but yeah, that's Amazing. where we're at with that. Next up. Um and then I th- and that's really it, I think, from a C tier perspective. Really? I think after that we move to B. And so... I think we've got a pretty long pretty extensive wow, B tier. That's, that's crazy because nothing has entered C from B, but everything that was in C has gotten worse into D. So that's yeah. that's bad. That's quite bad. What, well, what I'm going to say is actually it's good, and I'll explain why. So um, when, we look, when we got that balanced data slate, it wasn't big. It didn't make a lot of changes. I think some people were rather upset because we only get balanced data slates every quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been acknowledged by GW that um, – that it didn't do what they wanted. Um, but I think when you really deep dive the data and you look at where things are from a average first round loss perspective, from a tournament and winning position perspective, if you don't just look at win rates, um, other than Marines and Admech needing a, a big boost, I don't think the balanced data slate was that far off. We have, we've further, like, there are so many factions now that are in that, like, 45. 52 53 percent win rate uh range um and like when i used to when i used to look at this stuff um i would say for win rate 46 to 53 is kind of like the 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 best range you can if you can have everybody in that you're gold and we're almost there um but the big thing, and the reason why you shouldn't only just look at win rates, is like a lot of these top end factions, their average first round loss has been dropping down. And we're not seeing all these 2.5s and 2.6s that we were seeing before, which is a big change in the net positive for me. That's, yeah, that's really uh, good, right? That means people are figuring so, out counter meta options with weaker lists. Yep, yep. And uh, like the, the big bads do need a look for sure, but I don't think it's as bad as, as some people would think. Um, but it's still but the yeah, best. It's it, still the best ninth edition has been these last these last three to six definitely months. Definitely the best that ninth yeah. edition has been. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I just, I just mean there is some list some armies that have been in C and D tier for it feels like eighteen months of the last two years. Oh yeah, like Admech yeah. basically since yeah. their since their big nerf last LVO, they basically had a full year of of being garbage. Well, um, Death Guard as well. Death Guard has a huge player base, and they have oh. seen. Yeah. minuscule to no real change in what they take, how they take it. If, in fact, yep. just their best stuff has only gotten worse. Uh, Armour Contempt didn't help as much as I thought it would. No, not for them. And it, They're just too slow, and yeah. there's, the best armies in the game are so fast, so and they put up mortals. And, mm. um, anyway, let's do B-tier. So B-tier, I think we'll start with Drukhari. Um, Drukhari and Orcs are kind of in very similar yep. place. Nice. Um, they've got, so the big, the thing about Jukari that kind of makes them a little bit better than orcs is they almost have a, they're at a 1.96 average first round loss. Um, their meta percentage has dropped so much since they were the Kings of the Hill. Like it's only 2% of the meta. Um, and they only have a 46% win rate. Um, but they're still winning events. They still won a handful of events. That average first round loss, I think is the big thing though, that 1.96, it shows that like they're still capable of playing into the big boys Mm -hmm. and not. And like they, they're always going to be a challenge in the right hands, um, and that's kind of what makes them a B tier army. Were you um, saying that for or, orcs or Drakari or both? Drakari and orcs are yeah. very similar. Orcs have a lower yeah. uh, average first round loss, one point eight, but we've also seen them win. Like uh, they won what was it, Bao? Uh, yeah. No, not yeah. Bao. Uh, uh, SoCal. SoCal. They won SoCal. Yeah. Yeah. Not and that um, was only a couple of months ago, like right at the beginning, basically of this data set. Um, 
and they won. I mean, it was a bit of a meme <laughs> event, but they yeah. did win the like the competitive um, GW final uh, invitational at the yeah final. Um, like they've shown that they can still compete. Um, they're definitely an army that you got to watch out for. Mm. Uh, they just always have the the nuclear option in like in like a he- boxing or MMA. We'd always talk. We'd always say they always have the one the one punch KO power. Even if they're yep. slow, unwieldy, you don't do that well. And you know, in other skill sets, they always just have the I'm going to all in you, and it might just work. Yep, they they're like like the fact that skill rigs went back down in points was big yeah, for them. Huge. Um, and then like they're actually an army. If if Votan hadn't seen the nerfs that they did. Um, orcs are one of the Ooh, yeah. the armies yep. that actually like hands Votans its butt it's, cons- it was good. consistently. It, for me, I and, thought orcs and harlequins were going to be the two that would rise up and really give them yeah. issues. Yeah, so like orcs definitely B tier. They can still win. They're showing up some good numbers. Um, Chaos knights, one point six on that average first round loss would kind of put them as a C tier army, but they they have pulled out more wins than some of these other factions. Forty seven percent win rate. The fact is. They're a chaos faction, and you can ally flamers into them. <laughs> so, like that, gives them that little buff they need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, flame, flamers give everybody a little bit of buffs right right now, um, as we'll see as we progress so, up. So, but you're saying you're saying you believe without flamers they'd be what top of C tier? Oh yeah, for sure. But f- because you can ally ally in flamers, and it does, and it's they're still considered chaos knights. They're like a a B tier army yep. right now because. Of- and um, now you're top of B, bottom of A. Um, is going to be Blood Angels. Like Blood Angels, um, I would say they're a top of B. Now they've had you know seven tournament wins in these last couple of months. Yep. Uh, One point nine for their average first round loss. Forty seven point five percent win rate. Um, their T whip uh, ratio matches their field percentage pretty much one to one, which nice. is usually the same for me of a like a good balanced faction. Yep. Um, which you know should be top of B, bottom of A, in my opinion, and that's kind of where we're we're seeing them. So, um, Blood Angels like just rallying off of having um, a couple, well, one and two really good secondaries. Now that people have pivoted to the Death Company one uh, yep. pretty frequently, um, along with Relentless Assault and um, and just Sanguinary Guard are good, man. So, dude, well, actually, not so, much to say about it. so there's very few factions in C tier and B tier. It's like a total of yep. what one, two, three, four, five. It's only seven factions. Previously, we had nine, nine C tier, and nine in B tier. We had eighteen of the factions in mm-hmm. C, and now we only have seven. So it's less than half. Wow. All right, A tier. What's at the bottom? Um, Necrons. Necrons are the bottom of A tier. Wow. Um, I'm. I really want to hear about the uh, play percentage. How many people stopped playing them? Um. After the, the the balanced data slate, like okay, well, I mean, was... so right now we're down to um five point seven percent of all players are Necrons, and if yep. I look pre balanced data slate at those numbers, we're looking at uh, almost nine percent of the field. Oh, so so they, uh, they oh. almost they <laughs> lost uh, over a third of their faction <laughs> because the uh, Silent King players. lost core. You babies. And all the secondaries are still crazy. <laughs> they really are. Um, but there's uh, a couple things going against them. Yeah. One is like I'm being um, they they play really poorly um, into chaos right now because flamers just ace them. And um, Votan, even yeah. though Votan is a very small field percentage, they destroy Necrons. Like well, their numbers against Necrons are massive. And I'm of the opinion Tau is seeing a bit of a resurgence at the moment. Guards are yeah. going to do the same, have pose the same problems. Um, I thought Necron's days were numbered, but just to see, you know, what over a third of the player base just drop them like it's hot as soon as one thing got changed, I think it's pretty funny. Pretty funny. Yeah, about forty percent of their player base dropped. Um, they're <laughs> they're down to about a forty eight percent win rate, forty seven percent win rate. Their average first round loss um, is almost two. So like they're still capable still of winning. Yep. Obviously, they're at a one to one T whip ratio, which I told you is like kind of that bottom top of B, bottom of A. Like you could call Necrons B tier, I think, at this point, and it wouldn't be a, a like an like a poor argument. Um, they've won um, you know one more event than Blood Angels have in this last period. Um. Yeah, like their numbers are like that bottom of A, top of B. Yeah, like yeah. scenario. Like it's just it's real good. It's just so funny how lopsided they get those results 
like there there isn't a good data sheet left in, in like there isn't a good data sheet in that book and it's just all scoring ability i love it i think it's a, i think it's a great a great tale for the necron players anyway what's next in a um we're gonna go with adeptus custodies wow so they've lifted up they were i think in the upper upper regions of yeah they were second highest in b tier previously and now they're heating into what the the lower portion of a tier Yep, and I think some of this though is like what I told told you about this kind of contraction of factions where like the top end isn't as top as it was. Yep. So there's like there's a bit of a less of a split. Like you could say that some of the next couple of factions I'm calling are top of B if you really wanted to, and I don't think you'd be like wrong in saying so. Um, I'm just putting them more like a bottom of A because they they're still above that 50% win rate. They're sitting like 51 to 52% win rate yep. week to week. Um, unless you're playing solely in the UK because UK TC boards, um, like, and the player base in, in the UK, you, the UK is one that you can't afford to try to four plus your way to victory. Yep. Um, they, they have got a, like a 2.0 uh, average first round loss, uh, their one to one ratio on their T whip, you know, once again, like they're slightly better, they're performing slightly better than Necrons are given like how many people are playing them. Um, so like they're above Necrons, but they're they're kind of below the rest in my opinion of, of what we're looking at here now. Yep, fair enough. Uh, what comes next after Necrons and Custodes? Um, Tau Empire would be yep. next. They've got a, almost a 2.1 for their um, average first round loss. Their win rate is 50-50. Um, they've won Beautiful. seven events. Um, once again, like a one to one ratio on their T whip to to um, to field percentage. So they're, they're just doing great. It's a mm. it's a it's a very solid faction, and in the right hands, they're devastating. Like we're still seeing people like Tom Ogden and Nassim Fushain put up numbers with them. Yep. Um, they obviously play well, um, and like nothing really changed for them. Um, and they're good into a lot of the meta right now. They, they, there's not a whole lot that if you play them right, that you're going to lose to. So totally agree, man. I think they are somehow going by the wayside as one of the best factions in the game. They're just not getting that much attention. I think they're absolutely ridiculous at the moment. Yeah, um, I think I think they might even be better than what we're saying. Same. But from a statistics perspective, that's where they're at. Yeah, I, I think they're I think they're one of the best. Uh, in my, personally, I think they could be S tier in the in the right hands, but. We're going purely off data for this bad boy. What comes next? Um, next, um, we're going to say is going to be um, Chaos Space Marines. They're being held up a lot by Emperor's Children, of course, um, and le- and Creations of Bile, plus a little bit of whoever is allowing them to be allied with Flamers. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, because like Emperor's Children list alone are at about a 2.3 for average first round loss, which is in that broken area. Yep. Uh, but a win rate at at 50 50 percent and that's why you you can't just use win rates mm-hmm. right like they empress children are below 50 percent win rate chaos marines on a whole are 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 below 50 percent if you count all their sub factions um slightly above um if you kind of discount the ones that are terrible but like regardless like they are this like 50 50 percent scenario they have a 2.1 average first round loss um um like when you break them down across everything, mm-hmm. their uh, T whip, if they're Emperor's children, is almost uh, like the ratio is almost three to one. Oh. When you uh, separate out the the quote unquote regular Chaos Space Marines list from yep. the the rest, um, and but like by themselves is one point two to to one. So really solid. Yeah. Emperor's children are probably in uh, like a high A. Bottom yeah. S faction, yeah, but yeah. Chaos Space Marines as a whole are an A tier faction. Hmm. I mean, uh, Empress Children really do feel like the, apart from maybe Black Legion, but Black Legion then only sometimes feels like well rounded within CSM. The other ones just feel like they got that. Here's the one thing you get to do well. Um, well, I mean, Creations yeah. of Bile can carry, especially now that they take well, flamers. Like that's yeah, thing, exactly but. right. Yeah, it, Creations. Of, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more mentioning just pure mono, but um. Yeah, creations of bile like <laughs> in teams. Creations of bile is just ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's uh, it's like I mean, I think last yeah. time we talked a little bit about their their numbers, and they they don't have as much representation now because I think a lot of people switched to chaos demons and thousand suns um, off of uh, like just how good flamers are and how yeah. like how you can slop them into anything. Um, but from a like, from just a regular CSM, the CSM book is in my opinion now probably the best book they've released because it didn't need a whole lot of changes to be a balanced to slightly good book yeah um compared to everybody else right like they haven't had to nerf anything or buff Dude, anything really in it it's 100%. just as good i just wish they had a good shooting legion 
I just wish I had a legion that actually just made their shooting good because that's the only thing they seem to be missing. It's like, okay, cool, you can, you can, you're a melee faction that can do this one other thing, maybe okay. Um, but yeah, apart from that, you're absolutely right. Like that book is has actually shown to be extremely versatile, mm-hmm. apart from shooting, and, <laughs> and didn't need any nerfs. I mean, didn't need to be nerfed. Didn't need to be my, changed. Hasn't been need to my be. My brother in Christ, nerfed. Emperor's Children have one of the best shooting phases in the game because that's, their troop choice is incredible. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's why I said they're the only one that feels well rounded. Um, yeah, they're the only one that feels like they can do, they can have it all. Anyway, what's next? Okay, um, I think you know what I should have put these these guys below Chaos Space Marines, uh, but I got distracted because like their their numbers now. are all over the place. Uh, but Imperial Knights. Oh, I thought I thought you were gonna say that. Um, and they, like they're about yeah. the same. Like their their numbers are very similar. They're almost at a two point one for their average first round loss. They're at just under a fifty one fifty two percent win rate. They've won uh, or gone undefeated at eight events um in the last two months like they're def they definitely are capable of putting up numbers that their uh, renegade knight buddies can't um it's yeah. it's just straight up the free blade lance isn't it it's like oh, wow the whole, a whole tier they, they jump a whole tier up because they have a free blade lance in the uh, well i believe they have a free blade lance and the renegade knights don't well also the secondaries are just vastly better they have, than the they have goods they have better secondaries free blade lance is really good but also like they have that um like the like the math list right where you like you set up your your bastard helm and your paladin with yeah. your crusader and you yeah. just have like like all the re-rolls in the world um so if you're at a table with with um a, let's say a limited amount of terrain um <laughs> very happy to love you <laughs> like if you don't if you don't play i mean here's the thing once guard are fully out like imperial knights stop existing like don't bring knights anymore yep. because between votan and guard you're just not going to win anything guys so just pretend that knights are only good until next week <laughs> um, depending on the data slate because like lehman russes are just going to pick up all of your knights turn one yep. votan already can do it it's just because they got nerfed enough most people don't realize votan are still good mm-hmm. um and uh, like if you read the AOW Discord at all. Um and yeah, like that's where we're at. Like um so Imperial Knights definitely currently an A tier faction. They are but they are on the precipice, as they always are as a skew as a skew uh, army, right? Yeah, exactly right. All right, uh, anything else on A tier? Um uh, yeah, I would say uh, we're we're gonna wanna put in um and this is where we're getting kind of near the top of, of A for sure. Like Craft World Eldar, um, let me just double check a couple of numbers before I, I, I say too much. Yeah, Craft World Eldar for sure, an A tier army. Yep. Um, got that 2.16 average first round loss, which is incredible. A 52% win rate, which is just fantastic. And a 1.4 T whip ratio. Like, this is the top of A, mm. like, um, a definite top of A kind they, of bottom of S. They've gone faction, really Craft hard World. since since last one. Last one, they were an upper B tier. In fact, I think they were the only B plus faction and now they are sitting in the upper echelons of a tier so they've jumped essentially a whole tier how, how does that how why i think there's a couple things going on like um there was like some uktc rulings which made swooping hawks absolutely silly mm-hmm. um which definitely helped them um given the amount of those events that have gone through um people have um you know switched back to Althway um and yep. have found a like a lot of success particularly into or better success into some of these heavy psychic armies um that are becoming more and more prevalent um i.e. thousand suns um yep. plus flamers um so that's giving them better game and um and we were just seeing some really fun stuff like people are, well, are experimenting more with the codex we're seeing the avatar come out more and more so, uh, to good effect so the biggest thing i thought that was holding them down was straight up Tyranids. I thought Tyranids was just absolutely blanket yep. holding them down. Maybe this was a Leviathan nerf. Leviathan nerfed and they just got banged. They just got like a, a 10% bump. Yep. I mean, like their their numbers have been amazing since. Like they're not winning a lot. They've only won four events mm-hmm. or gone undefeated, I should say, at four events. Um, but like their average first loss is in like amazing territory. Um, their T-Whip is almost a one-to-one ratio now. Like they... They have everything to be – they are like an, an also-ran right now. So I guess that's kind of why they should be more the A-tier. Um, and then um, I guess the only other one – and this is one where the numbers would often put them as an S-tier army. Mm-hmm. Um, but so few people play them. Um, as Gene Steeler cults. And that's, I think, 
Gene Steeler Cult had a really big boost there for about a month in November. Yep. Um, when people, like end of October, early November, when people started copying um, Eric Lathuris' list. And that's when everyone ha- had enough money to buy the models that Eric ran. <laughs> it was, yeah. It wasn't in yeah. August when he ran it. It was two months later when they finally got all the bikes yeah. together. <laughs> and so we started seeing like bike spam come back. Um, yep. You know, Innes Wilson played it a couple times to did decent pretty, success. Well. Yep. So we've had, you know, they've had five undefeated lists. Um, they've had six go to T-Whip. Their T-Whip ratio was, is 1.5 to 1. Their average first round loss is 2.28, which is absolutely incredible. Mm. Um, but, you know, only 1% of the field. Yeah. So it's hard to say if more people played them what that would do. Um, but, you know, Gene Steeler Cults, like, they're an A-tier army for sure. I don't think they're S-tier material, um, but I, they're definitely A. Um, and then lastly, uh, Sisters of Battle. This is an interesting one. I think that they are probably also top of A for yep. the sake of of things. So they have a 52% win rate, just like Gene Steeler Colts. Average first round loss over over two. Their um, their ratio, their T whip ratio is 1.4, which is still fantastic. Like it's better than basically everybody else we've talked about, other than Emperor's mm-hmm. Children um, mm-hmm. and Gene Steeler Colts. But they've got you know triple the play. They 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 make up five percent of the meta now. They've still got incredible secondaries they've won 10 events um i i hear a lot of people get down on sisters because tyranids and harlequins have been so good for so long that people kind of forget and say like oh they're not that great but they're just consistently up there and like they stay consistently up there for months so yeah totally agree and it's really weird to say from sisters because they there's been no new innovations to that list it, I keep saying this on every freaking podcast. I, I keep being stunned that sisters maintain their <coughs> winning ways when essentially they've been doing exactly the same thing, running exactly the same list for what feels like a year. I don't, not sure mm-hmm. if it is. I'm yep. not sure if it is a year, but it feels like a year. Um, of we've exactly seen a couple like slight, slight changes. Like we've seen some innovation probably nine months ago, but then everyone was like, "No, we got to go back to Bloody Rose because that's <laughs> yeah. what works." Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, all right. And now we have our S tier. We have our S tier. a good amount of factions here. I think there's like four, right? Five? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Potentially six, so, depending on how you word things. But I would say five is a good number. We'll start us off. Um, I'm going to start with OTAN as our lowest S tier mm-hmm. faction. Yep. Uh, Hunter gone undefeated in five events. They have an uh, average first round loss of 2.33. Their win rate is almost 54%. It's pretty good. They're, so they are, you know, and this is kind of where I talked earlier about my, like, I think a faction is balanced if it's between about a 46 and a 53. So anything above a 53 is when I start going, this is like a slightly too good faction. Yeah. Leaks definitely there. Where uh, their uh, T whip ratio is 1.5 to 1. Um, they make up. Just over two percent of the meta, so they they're a little bit busier than Gene Steeler cults, but that's but just going to keep. Much. Yeah. Well, once people see now, I do know some people that think that leagues are still the best faction in the game. I know, like the stat check guys, kind of posted as like their opinion, but not numbers based, was that they're the best. Yep. It's just people haven't haven't figured it out. I think what holds them back. Well, I know what holds them back because when you deep dig deep into the numbers, you see is that league like they had all of their nerfs. But then um, they came back or they came into being in this like thousand suns resurgence mm. because the like the thing that league the things leagues lose to are the things that just win all the events. They lose to Harlequins. They've got like a 40 percent win rate into Harlequins. Mm-hmm. They've got like a 35 to 40, depending on if you're looking at casual data versus regular data uh, percent win, uh, win rate into thousand suns. Um, and their, their game into chaos demons is also in the low forties. Um, so, you know, three of the best factions in the game, they, they lose more than they win. Yep. And, um, if I pull tabletop battle app data from post guard codex, they are getting rolled by guard. Uh, yeah. Guard just seem like, hi, we are you, but better. Um, it, yeah. it's kind of like crazy. They don't have the combat. But they yeah. don't need it. Right? And the, but yeah, so. they, don't, they don't have the speed though. Like Gar just has. Oh, mm-hmm. here's here's this absolute idiot. He's, he's George from around the corner. He's an Olympic sprinter in this game, and you've literally got concrete shoes. And we're gonna. <laughs> I'm just gonna take away all the, your objectives. The thing with Votan is like, um, like they struggle into mortal wounds. 
And there's a couple factions here that I just listed that are very good at putting out mortal wounds. Um, and when you talk to some top players, like a lot of the best lists, when I used to talk to them, um, they would say, like, I'd be like, oh, I'm struggling on if I should bring a Grimnir or not. And they'd be like, oh, you need to bring the Grimnir because psychic actions give you your third secondary that you need. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just, and I'm like, well, what if you play Thousand Suns? Like, well, you just hope you don't. But now Thousand Suns <laughs> are becoming super popular. So you're just going to have to play against them. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and that's, a, I shouldn't say super popular, but they're getting more and more popular every day. Um, and so that's the kind of the struggle that we're in uh, for Votan players is you definitely have an S tier army. It's just like your, your bad matchup is all the other S tier armies where the other guys actually have good games into each other. So, yep. All right, my dude, what's next in S tier? Um, I think the next I would call out is Thousand Suns. Um, they have a slightly they have slightly less win rate than uh, leagues. They're like 35, uh, 30, 53 and a, and a half, fifty three point mm-hmm. five win rate. Uh, average first round loss of two point one five. They've won uh, one more game, uh, one more event, but that says mono thousand suns. Like when you add zinch to them, their numbers grow, go nuts. They just yeah. get better um, because flamers are so good. They're so good. Like, if you look at Zinch lists that are Thousand Suns plus Flamers, the handful that have reported themselves as that such, but even if I pull out the rest, they've got an average first loss of, like, 2.6. Yikes. So that, and that's, like, the numbers we used to see that we were scared of out of mm-hmm. Harlequins and Tyranids mm-hmm. when they were at their best, right? Yeah. Now, they don't have the numbers that uh, Harlequins and Nids were pulling. Like, their their percentages are still in, like, that 3 to 4% of the, the, uh, the meta. But it just shows how like how big of an impact flamers have on on uh, on the meta right now. Yeah. And I know GW has acknowledged that they're bad, and so I can fully expect that we're going to see some big nerfs for them shortly, or at least some moderate nerfs to them, um, because they are like heavy carrying Thousand Suns right now. Well, the, the heavy carrying. Well, I mean, every chaos. Cha- every chaos faction is going to be getting a bump. Like, and you said that about Chaos Knights. So Chaos Knights could easily be a C tier, but we don't know, we don't know how much of it's te- how much of it's flamer related or not. Um, but yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So, what's the where is T Suns without flamers? Are they still in S tier? Oh uh, no, I would say that they're an A tier army without flamers. Yep, yep, that, that'd be my assumption as well. Top, top, top of B, middle to, to the middle of A somewhere. Yep. Um, all right, what's next in S? Um, next in S, um, we'll call out. I would say at this point you're looking at Chaos Demons and Tyranids. Um, yeah, so Chaos Demons are 2.23 for their average first loss, uh, 54.5% win rate. Their T whip ratio is 1.33. Um, like just they're doing very well overall as mono Chaos Demons. We're seeing, you know, like the the Greater Demons list does does work. Um, lists that are just um, Heavily invested into flamers, of course, are doing is doing work. Um, the the greater demon list, the like, and plus Morbius, uh, the Bloodthirster, plus um, uh, Bellacor, or, mm-hmm. or instead of one of those, you take a um, um, oh, wow, was my brain leaving me today? Like a big chicken, um, has like has definitely shown that it's a very binary list that can just win events, and sometimes it can't. You know, they've they've gone undefeated in eleven events in the last two months, so like it, they definitely are fully capable. Um, sure, a lot of that is on the back of how good flamers are, um, which everyone knew they were good, but I think we it took a couple weeks for people to be like, oh no, they're just like stupidly good. Um, to kind of kick in and just how good they were. Um, but yeah, here we are. Uh, Chaos Demons are definitely an S tier army right now and they're holding strong. Fantastic. Uh, tell us about Nids, how they're doing at the moment. And I, I'd love to know if you know what the split is now between like Levy Kraken, Levy Behemoth, etc., etc. I can pull that up in a second. But Nids um, in general, 2.28 for their average first run loss. So it's dropped a little bit since we last talked. They're a 55% yep. win rate. So they're like the second best win rate in the game. Um, they do make up still 11% of T Whip, so they're they are the best T Whip faction, um, and they so you know 11% of all events are um, are uh, like 11% of all factions that could possibly win an event are Tyranids right now, and they make up 7% of the meta still. Um, that T Whip ratio is 1.67, so these are definitely healthier numbers than we've seen for a while out of them. 
Um, getting them below a 2.3 for their average first loss was big. Um, yeah. like that's, that's huge. Like it means that they really only need like kind of one more tweak, I would say to be, uh, to be, to be reasonable. Uh, yeah. And then if I just give me a moment here, let me try to get, find see if I can find a breakdown for you on the sub. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put my predictions, my predictions out. Uh, so okay. I, I, I think we're going to see. Oh, how, how's your data presented? Is it percentage, percentage of games played? Um, it's games played, but I can easily like. All right, all right. Do that. I think it's. I, I think it's now least. around the the the, the fifty five to sixty five percent Kraken, thirty to forty percent Levy, and then the rest is uh, Yormungandr, Behemoth, whatever the crap. Okay, well, let's see. Come on. Stop being a jerk. Uh, dun, dun, dun. This Christmas, buy your humble Falcon a better computer. So his, his, so his stats. I've got a really nice computer. Then man. why are your stats taking so long, mate? Chop, chop. Overclock that bad boy. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what overclock Don't is. tell me I don't how to live my life. Okay. I, I should probably change the dates because this is looking way too skewed. All right. Here we go. Um, so, Kraken is now... Um, burp, 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 burp. yes. So Kraken, so Kraken <laughs> and Levi are are almost fifty fifty in terms of play. There's slightly more Kraken than there are Levi, so we're looking at um, about thirty five percent of all Tyranid players are playing Kraken, um, and like thirty two percent are playing Leviathan. Um, we've got about twenty percent playing Behemoth, and then like Kronos. And the rest are like kind of make up every and Jorman Gunder. Jorman Gunder Hydra, yeah. And like the rest, yeah, your like Jorman Gunder has a decent amount of players, and so does Kronos. But it's like the big numbers are Kraken, then Leviathan with Behemoth as like a go. third. What wasn't as big a drop off as I thought from from Levy? Uh, essentially, what, Kraken what I, is like a fifty seven percent. He's a fifty five. Behemoth's a fifty six. Um, then everybody else is in like the forties. Dude, so. so they're still there's Tyranid's best is still around fifty seven percent win rate. Yeah, yeah. Yikes. If you're running like a really good Kraken list in the right scenario, you're doing great. Like Damn. they didn't die. No, um, they took a big enough hit because you like Leviathan plus um, plus the high Flyrant was like like you had to have severe brain damage to, to fumble with it. I think. <laughs> um, so uh, apologies to all people that, yeah. that did well with Tyranids in that meta. Um, but you know, here at least you have to you have to think for about three more seconds before you do anything. And just have like ninety spore mines just in your pockets. Just like pull them out of your pockets like pocket sand and then just throw them at your opponent's board. Just pocket spore mines. <laughs> Um, so Tyranids definitely kind of like just like last time. Tyranids and Harlequins are still the top two factions in the game. Like nothing's changed, and you yeah. could argue whoever you wanted was the best because the Harlequins, way less percentage of the faction uh, of the populace, so only three percent. They have a better win rate at fifty six percent, but a worse average first round loss at two point two one. So it kind of just like they kind of even each other out. Um, so yeah, Tyranids, Harlequins, Chaos Demons are kind of your top three, and then you've got. Uh, Votan right below them, hanging out with Thousand Suns. There you go. That's uh, quite different. So uh, some of that is quite different from our previous. I don't think we had the new. I don't think the new. I think the new um, Chaos Demons Codex had just launched. We didn't have adequate yeah. data for it at the time. Um, so where no. did we place it previously? I think we had them either in A. I think we had them in A. We had. I want to say we- they, were, they were middle of A tier last time. Yeah. Yeah. So from bottom to top now, as it sits in the rankings, so D tier consists of. Uh, Imperial Fists, Dark Angels, Death Watch, Raven Guard, Iron Hands, Black Templars, Space Wolves, Salamanders, Ultras, and Admech. C tier being a pretty healthy Death Guard, uh, Astro Militarum, who will not be staying there for much longer, and Grey Knights. B tier, Orcs, Drakari, Chaos Knights, and Blood Angels. A tier, Necrons, Custodes, Tau, Imperial Knights, Chaos Space Marines, Craftword Eldar, GSC, Gene Steel Cult, Sisters, and then the S tier, Votan, T Sons. Chaos Demons, Tyranids, and Harlequins. Some of the big shakers there, uh, Necrons and Sisters were both in our S tier previously. They've both been dumped out, but having been replaced by Votan, T-Suns, Chaos Demons. Chaos Demons, of course, jumping out of the A tier into the S tier. And then a huge migration down of, from the B tier to the C and the D tier of the various Astartes flavors. 
Um, Craftwood Elder jumping from top of B tier to the top of A tier is quite impressive. Uh, and Orcs as well jumping. I oh, know Orcs staying. Orcs stayed stable in uh, in the B tier. Same with Drakari. Yeah. Very spicy, man. And, and, and overall, you're pretty happy with the meta as it sits right now. We didn't. We haven't really seen a gigantic shake up from the data site, like you said. Yeah. No, there was like. It's the small things that changed, right? We, we it wasn't a, it. You want the data slate to be like ground shaking, in my opinion, unless yeah. the meta is super healthy. Um, the problem with the way they've been doing it, in my opinion, has been has been that they've only focused on win rates, and because they've only focused on win rates, they haven't like done due diligence um, in correcting some some other problems. Mm. Um, and you know, they made some assumptions about Space Marines that were not. <laughs> the best like they i don't think they understood what was wrong with marines um and so i'm really interested to see where this next balance data slate takes us um as well as mfm because th- like that combined with the absolute insanity that is the arc of omens detachment um like i don't know what we're what kind of game we're going to be in but i feel like and i've seen I was, i'm gonna get this off my chest right now so i've Seen people say that Ark of Omens is going to destroy the game. I've seen people say that Ark of Omens is is nothing because we've already had spearhead detachments, blah, 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 and we wanted our CP back, and this is getting our CP back. I will say that any time we've ever added something to the game that has opened up options for people has been bad for the game. Mm-hmm. Um, by, by, by like We restricted CP for a reason, and it seemed to help. Like some people, yes, some people complained about it, and they may be restricted a slightly too much. Um, but um, like overall, the game has been getting better by adding in a detachment that's just take whatever you want um, at no CP impact. You're just going to end up with skew now, and the skew is going to like it's not going to be fun for the the competitively casual player or the casual player in a competitive meta in particular um because it, it never matters for the top end guys because we like they it's, own everything it's, it's anyway the sa- it's exactly right it's the same journey that they're always on they're always they've, they're shackled to that gravy train of whatever is the best most broken most bestest stuff um and so yeah. that's always just going to churn on so it doesn't matter it's it's uh, us plebeians that sit in the uh middle upper middle lower middle that whole tier where we have aspirations and now less ability. And when they remove these bindings, when they like, when they're just like, "Hey, go to town, take as many elites or spearhead or like uh, heavies or whatever you want," like this is what makes the top end lists boring, because that's what it's going to end up being, right? If you don't have a troop tax anymore, um, like I'm sure it's gonna it's gonna really res up or like rile well, up <laughs> the top end of the meta, yeah. but it's. Well, we will save the rest of that chat. We will table that because I expect us to be having a little bit more of that on over on the part two. But we do have a couple of listener yep. questions we're going to be answering. Um, and yeah, we will extrapolate on who we think are the biggest winners and losers just talking about the detachment. We may allude to some other things that we have heard or just speak to some rumor mongerings that are going about the uh, the discords and the, the Facebook posts and the Reddits and such and such. Um, but yeah, nothing gospel, of course. Everything to be taken with a grain of salt. Please join us over there at Art of War Down Under over on Patreon, which is the only place you can get that part two now. So look forward to seeing you there. Once again, encapsulating our uh, tier list as it stands going into the end of the meta right now. You know, Battle Starter Slate with standing. B tier, sorry, D tier exists with pretty much every Astartes. Um, except for Grey Knights and Blood Angels, but Imperial Fist, Dark Angels, Death Watch, Raven Guard, Iron Hands, Black Templars, Space Wolves, Salamanders, Ultras, and Admech, C tier, Death Guard, uh, Astra Militarum, Grey Knights, B tier, Orcs, Drakari, Chaos Knights, and Blood Angels, A tier, Necrons, Custodes, Tau, Imperial Knights, CSM, being Chaos Space Marines, Craftwood Eldar, Gene Steel, Colts, and Sisters of Battle, and the S tier, Votan, uh, Thousand Suns, Chaos Demons, and Tyranids, and Harlequins. That is as it sits, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Peter, anything you'd like to say or plug? No. Fantastic. Do the thing. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Art of War Down Under. 
a content review podcast for Warhammer 40K. Hosted by Adam Camilleri. Produced by Seamus Ronan. Enjoyed the show? Want your lists reviewed and the content you heard put into practice? Sign up to our Patreon and connect with us online or on Facebook. Just search for Art of War down under. Signing out from tomorrow. Tomorrow.